Okay, so I don't normally do these kind of videos either. I think this is like a reaction video. I'm pretty sure it's called a reaction video. I don't do this kind of stuff. I don't involve myself in these kind of things directly. I usually just make a comment and then I just forget what I said and I move on. <laughs> so it is what it is. But today we're going to be investing into this actual topic. Okay. Today's topic is borrowed time as a base kit. Okay. This person's going to make points as to why they think it's a good idea to have borrowed time as a base kit. And I'm going to respectfully disagree with this point. Okay. And I'm going to cover the points as we go along through this video. So let's get right into the video. Also, one more thing before I click play. The reason why there's a black box in the, in the bottom left corner is because there's an icon there and I don't want it to be part of the video in case I get copyright struck or whatever else. So that's why the black box is there. Okay. It's nothing provocative, nothing bad. It's just a picture of an emoji girl and that's it. Okay. That's, that's all it is. All right, I want to talk about why I think a base kit BT will actually be good for the game. Now, here's, I have a list of few things that will, well, why it's good and a list of few things of what they should change if they're going to make a base kit. So here's why I think it's going to be good. New players are going to have an easier time. Now, Okay, so immediately he goes into the new player experience. Okay, but let's continue on with the video a little bit. Now, the devs have already shown that they care more about the new player experience, which of course, that's important for the game. Mm -hmm. So newer players can keep playing and they don't leave so early. Because if new players come in the game and only play for five minutes because the game is hard or takes too long to get into the game or something, they're not going to want to play the game. So they want newer players to have a much easier time. Okay. So he, his first argument is for new players. Let me tell you why the argument is not a good argument, okay? Games like this, competitive PvP, should not be based around new players or even casuals. It should be based around people that are playing the game and testing out the perks and using whatever they can to win matches. Okay. It should be based around that. That would be like going into, I'm going to use Warcraft in an example, Warcraft PVP. That would be like taking a new player, sticking him into the PVP in World of Warcraft, and then making the game all about that new player instead of about everybody else that's playing the game for thousands of hours that are investing the time into actually learning the PVP, the PVP environment. I just, I will say it would be like that. It'd be like sticking anybody into any competitive environment as a new person and saying, Hey, let me, we base this whole thing around you. You go have a good time. You go enjoy yourself. You'll, you'll, you'll be okay. Okay, it'll be perfectly fine. Nothing's gonna happen to you. Okay, you take it easy, pat on the head, and you push them along. Okay, and he's like, okay, and he just goes on with his day. All right, new games, I mean, not new games. Games should not be based around new players, and they shouldn't even be based around casuals because casuals don't even play the game as often as the other people do. The casuals come on whenever a new item is added to the shop. Whenever the shrine is reset and they just have the points to buy a new perk in the shrine and then they play the game until they get however many shards you got to get to buy a new perk. I think it's like 2000, maybe 2500. I forget one of those things. And then they quit and then they just wait till next week to buy another shard or they come on and they play the game for a couple hours and then they just go play something else after. Right. Casuals should not be balanced at all. New players should not be balanced at all. The game should not balance these two things around either one of those. Okay. Now the new player is not going to spend just five minutes. I'm assuming this is not like an actual thing to take seriously, but I'm going to just point on to it. Anyway, a new player is not going to spend five minutes. It takes a lot longer than five minutes to do the tutorial for the freaking for most games, especially for dead by daylight, a lot longer than five minutes. Okay. We're going to base it around their experience in the match. Okay. I'm going to get to, into that a little bit later. Their experience in the match and how long it takes to grind stuff. Okay. That's what it's going to be based around the grinds and the experience. And that's going to keep them invested into the game. How quickly they can get perks, how quickly they can get items, how quickly they can do X, Y, and Z. And then that with how much fun they're having, how little fun they're having and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Also, 
new players usually play with one other friend, okay? Usually. Sometimes they don't. But usually they play with one other friend, okay? So, that's not really a buff to anything or whatever. It's just saying that they usually play with one other friend. So they have, are at least having fun. They're having a bit more fun than what they would be than what they would be by themselves. Okay, a little bit more fun. Okay, let's let's continue with the video now. Which of course this will do it. You know, most newer killers don't know about like, well, most newer killers are gonna tunnel for sure. Mm -hmm. Then they're gonna see it as like, they're not gonna think too much about it. Mm -hmm. So this will help newer players, you know, to last longer in the game and want to actually play the game much more. Now, second thing is it would would be. A Okay, so you notice how he said new killers will mostly tunnel and mostly camp. All right, this is true. New, new killers do mostly tunnel and they do mostly camp. Okay, he didn't mention, however, the survivor side for new players. Survivors, new survivors, and everybody's seen that new survivor, the new Dwighty Poo that you don't want to kill because he's just so cute and innocent, doesn't know what the hell he's doing, right? Those kind of survivors that don't even touch a gen most of the time aren't going to be going for saves most of the time either. They might go for the save if they're close, but if they're far away, they're not going to go for the save. Most of the time, they don't even know what a friggin' gen is 90% of the time. That's why the game has to plop them next to, to, to a gen. The game plops the survivor next to a gen or relatively close to a gen so that the new person, the new player, can find the gen easier and stick right to it. I don't know why they do that because... Most new new players don't even touch the gen because they don't want to be found right away. They'll wait until someone's found, and then they might go touch the gen. Maybe, if they can even find the gen. Maybe, okay? But for the most part, new players are going to be walking around the map, trying to just, they're just looking at the map. They're looking at their surroundings. They're trying to maybe find people to guide them maybe maybe they want someone to guide them i don't know they might though uh and then they'll just camp around the map they're not doing a goddamn thing we've all seen those players most of them are claudettes you do get the dwighty poos but most of them are the blendettes that kind of just crouch in a corner or something crouch in the grass and they just hide i used to play that way too when i was a new player so i know i know your pain fam i know your pain okay but please get out of the grass and please go do the gin. Even if you miss the skill check, it's okay. If you want to wait for the killer to pass, or you want to wait for the killer to hit someone else first, I understand. Please go touch the gen after, okay? I beg you. Please. <laughs> okay? I don't expect them to get a save. And when they do save, it's not a very good save. And that's why I bring the Sipes to Strike, okay? I bring the Sipes to Strike. Because it's just in case I run into a new player that doesn't know what they're doing. And I don't blame the new player. The new player is a new player. Okay, I don't blame them. Okay, that's why I prepare myself in case I run into a new player. With the Sight Strike. And Borrow Time. And other perks that help me. Sometimes I'll bring in self-care. Because, uh, well, I have a boom. But when you're a solo, the boons aren't really effective as a solo player. Okay, they're not that great. But uh, it is there if you want to use it. I still use Inner Strength. And sometimes I'll bring in self-care. But it takes too way too long to do self-care. But anyway, it's mostly because I can't find a bloody totem. So, I mean, let's let's be real. <laughs> I just, I can't find a bloody totem. Anyway, that, uh, besides that, though, they're not going to be doing anything. They're not going to be doing a whole lot. And we've seen it. Again, we've seen it in many, many videos where survivors just, the new players just don't do anything. Okay, let's a boost. Or they'll be hiding in a damn locker. Okay, why are you hiding in a locker? I don't know. I understand if you know about barbecue and chili, I understand you're hiding in a locker because of that. But if you're hiding in a locker, just to hide in a locker, get out of the goddamn locker, please. Thank you. <laughs> okay. It would be a buff to solo queue, which is a good thing. That's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You should buff solo queue so that if you buff solo queue, then they can, you know, nerf survivor to match kind of like this, the killer's level, whatever, you know? Okay. Let's talk about this now. So he's talking about, uh, Buffing the solo queue. Well, the problem with that is the devs are planning on buffing the solo queue already to match the level of Swift. So I think before we start recommending stuff like this, we should wait to see what the devs do first. Because that alone, buffing the solo to Swift level, is either going to make or break the game. And in my opinion, it's 
probably going to break the game. You're going to have more people leaving the game. It's going to be good for for survivors. It's going to be absolutely garbage for killers, but it depends on how they do it. Let me give you some examples of why I think that buffing the solo would be bad to match the swift level, okay? The first thing they could do is they could increase the gen speed for solo players, okay? They're going to try and identify who's solo, who's not solo, and then that person, because they're solo, is going to get a slight buff in the gen speed just by being solo. And that could be paired with uh, prove thyself, right? Now you got a, a huge increase in speed boost for the gen. If they, if they do that. Another thing they could do is they could somehow display all of the perks for each survivor in the lobby and then try the solo survivor could try and match their perks to help the team out right which technically wouldn't be a bad thing for soul or uh, for new players technically but at the same time the swift could tell them what to run and they could do that without even being shown it but they could still do it anyway right it would just be easier for the person to know what to run or what to use to help them right so or even if they like let's say all of them are running ds the solo person if they know how to play the game the solo person could try and use that knowledge that they already pre-have to use that to try and help the team uh basically waste time for the killer and help the team is what i'm trying to say okay so if they know how to do things correctly and to use the perks to the best of their advantages right it could break the game entirely okay right there the other thing that they could do, so I mentioned uh, a speed boost. I mentioned a perk, uh, a perk visibility. If they add in in-game chat so that only the survivors could hear it, but not the killer, that would also break the game. Okay, if you're going to add an in in-game chat, the killer should also hear the chat. So if they do that, it's going to break the game. The game's going to be done because now everybody can talk to everybody. And it is what it is, right? As fun as that would be, if the game was balanced correctly and balanced well enough, they could add in-game chat. They could, but it's not. So it shouldn't until they fix it, okay? I'm not saying they shouldn't do it. I'm saying that it's right now. Right now, they shouldn't. I'm not saying they never should is what I meant to say, okay? Let's go back into the video again that could be good because solo queue is the weakest thing right now and you want to buff and again they're, they're already buffing it so, so again we should wait to see again we should wait to see what they do first before recommending stuff where perks your teams have and they don't have bt and you just get tunnel well that sucks you know mm -hmm. so having a base kit bt is good because okay but okay but what if you don't have decisive strike let's say let's say you get saved with borrow time the killer goes immediately right after you the person that unhooked you doesn't take the hit for you, doesn't go down for you, so you can actually go and escape. Okay, let's say that he runs away, the killer's going right after you now, you have borrow time, the bar, uh, the killer knows how many seconds to wait for the bar time to go away. He hits you, and then you go down, and you don't have to side strike, so now you're back on the hook again, all right? It's not just borrow time, there's other things you have to use too, right? It's not just borrow time. And we're going to get into something a little bit... Uh, down the road here as well, which I'll bring back again later. Guarantee that if your teammates unhook you, mm -hmm. you'll most likely be fine or have a chance to escape or something. You will escape if you have the sight strike and you don't miss your skill check. All right, you'll be able to get a much much better advantage. So it, this won't be so bad. Those are two good things that you know doesn't that don't sound too bad. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, if it can't just be regular BT because it'll be kind of annoying to go against. Mm -hmm. So the way I think they should do this some little changes that they should do is if the killer is actually like hardcore camping or kind of proxy camping or near the hook for some reason, the timer should be longer. No, no, it should not. So let's say they increase the number, uh, let's say they increase it from 12 to, I don't know, let's just say they double it to 24, right? So they'll probably do like 30 seconds, right? Let's say they do that. 24 seconds. Is a long goddamn time okay you could go around the map i'm pretty sure you could go around the map within 24 seconds 
Not it depends on how big the map is, okay? But for the more normal maps, not the big ones, the more normal maps, you could probably go almost fully around the map or maybe halfway around the map. But I'm going to say fully around the map. I'm going to say that because we're just going to use the most extreme thing. Because why not? But my point is that you will be able to go a pretty long distance without getting hit. Okay. Um. So at the end of the game, in most matches, especially ones that I face, in most situations, you have to camp for a kill at the end of the match. There's no point in moving. There's no point in going anywhere because the gens are probably already almost done and they're 99% anyway. There's no point in going anywhere. There's no point in moving because the second you move, the survivor could get saved and borrow time activates no matter what. So that's 24 seconds that you have to wait to down that survivor again. All right. Then you also have to add in decisive strike and everything else. But for the most part, 24 seconds. A survivor can definitely get out in 24 seconds of borrowed time if they don't fuck up. Even 12 seconds they can. But if they don't fuck up, they can definitely go and escape within 24 seconds. Plus, when you hit them, they get a speed boost as well. So they're gone. There's no point, right? So, no. Increasing the time because a killer is camping is not a valid reason at all. Because, again, at the more experienced levels... Killers have to camp. There are some situations, most of the time, killers have to camp. If you watch comp, most of the time it's end game. Most of the time, the killer's camping. There's no point in increasing the time. Let's go back to the video again. So that if the killer does decide, does decide to kind of go after them, this is 1080p, right? They have a much longer time of the endurance effect, and it'll be fine. Again, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's very bad. I don't. I don't think that's too crazy to ask. Yes, it is. The longer timer will be good. No. No, well. Now, if they're not near the hook, right, mm -hmm. the timer should be shorter because they're not being tunneled or nothing. The killer that I agree with. That if the killer isn't near the hook and the killer is actually going and trying to defend the generators, he should be rewarded for leaving the hook. Okay, that I agree with. So instead of 12, it could be like maybe six seconds to get of borrowed time. Now you're saying, what if the killer comes back immediately? That I understand. Depending on how far the killer went would decrease the number of seconds. Right? So if they went 12 meters away, well, it's, it, at borrow time should be activated no matter what. Okay, let's just get that straight. In some situations, borrow time should just be there no matter what. You bring a perk, you use a perk, whatever. But let's just say if you go X amount of distance, you get an extra three seconds off, and that's it. Like that, the max you get is like three, maybe four seconds. You get an extra, that's it. Okay, so for walking away, you get less time on borrowed time. All right, as the killer needs to actually get close by now it shouldn't be based on the terror radius it should be based on the killers yeah i agree with this position. it should be based on where the killer is like pig and rave could have used that like mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. so if they're not near it the timer should be shorter yeah like now, a maximum of three seconds shorter if you do hit the survivor bt and you leave, you do leave it alone because in some situations you know survivors are going to use bt just to body block mm -hmm. it's not really anti-tunnel right so i think the men time should be longer so that if you if they do body block, right, mm -hmm. they have to mend longer if they do manage to get away. And you, you, you yeah, I agree, I agree with that. If if the survivor decides to hey, I'm going to use this body block, this extra life I have now, uh, to help my teammate who was injured but they saved me, uh, then they should get a longer mend time. That I agree with. I can get behind that as well. I have no problems with that because you sacrificed yourself again. To help your friend or you to help your fellow survivor escape, right? Because they would have been hooked. Now, if you have the Scyther Strike, you're going to get away. Okay? You're 100%. If you don't miss the skill check, you're going to get away. Unless you save it for something else. But you're going to get away, right? So it's, a, it's more of a risk-reward kind of thing. It depends on the situation. If you don't have the Scyther Strike... And you get hit with body, and you and you uh, hit get hit by body blocking again. You're gonna get a speed boost, so I don't think it really matters. But now the killer has to make a choice: to either go for you and risk the size strike, or to go for the person he hasn't hooked yet. And even though you body blocked, you might have the size to strike. So me as a killer, I'm gonna go for the other guy because the other guy might not have the size to strike. It also depends on where that guy goes, right? Because depending on where he goes, maybe he's going to a strong loop area. 
I might just ignore him and go after you instead and just leave you on the floor for a bit until your decisive strike goes away, right? It depends. It's all situational. It all depends on what's happening, okay? If I see the other guy who's injured, who doesn't have decisive strike, going to a strong loop area, I'm not going to follow that guy. I'm going to follow you instead, okay? And then hopefully try and get you down quickly and slug you on the floor to waste your decisive strike. That's what I'm going to do as a killer. And then maybe I'll try and go somewhere else to like a closer gen. Maybe I'll find someone else and you can just stay on the floor. I won't go back to you, right? So again, you're, you're pretty much safe if you bring the Cypher Strike. And most killers, most killers will assume you have the Cypher Strike. I always assume people have the Cypher Strike, unless they don't see the little claws. You see these little claws right here? If they don't have, if no one has those, I know that no one has the Cypher Strike, right? So for the most part, it depends. It's all situational. It all depends on what's happening. Okay. But I will leave you on the floor if you were already hooked and go after, try and go out to someone else. And if I don't find nobody, I'm going to come back to you and I'm going to try and pick you up or I'll try and find someone who's maybe healing you from the ground. It could be that injured survivor that went away to the strong loop and now they're coming back to try and save you again. Right. And then that's a down right there. So it, it's completely situational. You need to go after the other person. I think that's fair. But for the most part, I do agree that mending should take longer if you body block. I think those are a few things that the changes should be. Um, let me know what you guys think. If you think base kit BT is a good or bad thing. And what, what's your reason for it? So mm -hmm. if you like this video, leave a like and uh, peace out. All right. So that's, that's, that's the video. The video was made by uh, Mega Place. All right. So uh, the, this video was only three minutes. The, the points were not that strong. They were, they were points, okay? But they're not that strong, all right? And again, you shouldn't base a game around new players and casuals. And I also wanted to bring this up too, but I forgot. So they're going to come to the screen. They're going to come to the screen. They're going to look at the characters. They're going to try and decide what, who has what perks, right? Because they're going to be all, they're not going to be all here like this. They're going to be like three perks, right? And then they're going to maybe, maybe they'll discover this up here and click it and see all everybody's perks. I don't know what new players do. Okay. But eventually they will discover that this game is going to take a lot of time to invest in getting up these survivors. Okay. And killers survivors and killers. All right. I recommend only just playing one survivor and getting all the perks on that one survivor. If you can. Okay. That's what I recommend. Just pick one survivor, get all the perks on that one survivor and then just leave it. Okay. You just play that one survivor. It is what it is. But eventually they're going to realize that this game is a really, really, really tough grind. Okay. So let's put all the things that in this game that make it a grind. Okay. First of all, there's different tiers of perks. You got tier three, you got tier two, and you got the yellow tier ones. All right. In the blood web, it offers you either a tier one or a tier two, and then it'll eventually it'll give you a tier three. There are a lot of perks in this game. And again, a lot of time has to be made and invested into the game because the blood webs go from real small to real big. From real small to real big, you get a little bit more of, now you only get like three. Some, no, you get four. Okay, I was going to say sometimes it's four, but yeah, you get about three or four perks. My Dwight is P3, as you can see. P3 does not matter a goddamn thing. Doesn't matter at all. The blood web is the blood web. So don't even bother getting P3 if you don't want to, but this is what it looks like. I'll show you what it looks like. There you go. This is a little P3 Dwight. All right. There you go. Okay. That's the blood web. This is my P3 Dwight. It, it doesn't matter. Getting P3 doesn't matter. It's just purely cosmetic. That's all it is. Just cosmetic advantage. And that's it. Uh, it said that it offered you better rewards in the blood web. I don't see it, but maybe it does. I don't know. I don't see it personally. Okay. So that's number one. The blood web gets bigger and bigger. And as you unlock more perks and get more perks, it's going to take longer and longer. Okay. So you have to get every single character up to level 40, which is why most of these are level 40. You have to get every single character up to level 40. And you have to buy the teachable perk before you can unlock it for everybody else. So you have to buy the teachable perk and unlock for everybody else. Then you got to go back to your character that you're playing on, your main character. And you got to grind out that perk until you get it in the blood web again, which. If you, if you're already on the first blood web like this and you learn a teachable perk, you have to actually go through this blood web first and then the next blood web, it should pop up. Depends on, you know, if you have all the perks or not yet, right? 
so you might not even get tier three on the next blood web. So let's, so you'd have to go through this perk here. You have to go through this blood web here to get to the next blood web. And the next blood web will either offer you a tier one or a tier two version of the perk you want. And then you have to go to another blood web to get the tier three again. You see how fucking stupid that is? <laughs> Completely stupid. Absolutely dumb. Okay. So that right there is already a grind. You gotta think about getting the perks now, right? You got your Shrine of Secrets, which I just, uh, which I showed you before. You got your Shrine of Secrets. The Shrine of Secrets only offers four perks and it refreshes once every week. Right here. The Shrine of Secrets updates once every week. Okay. I can actually take this off. This is, in, this, I don't know why this is still here. You can take that off. Refreshes once a week. So some players only come on once a week to get one perk and then they don't play they'll, either, they'll play for maybe two or three hours and then they'll stop playing after that decisive strike is in the perk is in the blow river now by the way if you don't have that get that op as fuck get that perk if you don't have it yet you got four days to do it anyway to even get these perks you need shards and it costs two thousand shards and depending on your player level if it's low or high you can get two thousand shards relatively easily if, if it's low if it's higher, it takes more time. And this goes up to 99 before it refreshes again. So that right there is a grind. You have to wait. You have to grind out shards. Wait once a week to get all the perks. You might not. You could probably even grind it out to get uh, 246, 8,000 8, shards to unlock all that. Okay. Not only that. Let's go back. But you have to store. And you got the characters. Right. Some of these characters can be unlocked. I, I have this unlocked, so I can't show you. But some of the characters can be unlocked with shards. And it takes 9,000 shards to unlock one character. If it's a licensed character, like Pinhead, Nemesis, uh, Pyramid Head. You can't unlock them with shards. You have to pay actual money. And it costs 500 Oryx cells, which is five books. Okay. Or you can buy the complete DLC and unlock both Survivor and Killer. Okay, so not only is it that you're only getting one character with your 9,000 shards, but you're also only unlocking that one killer with your shards. You're not even unlocking another survivor. And you can unlock survivors with 9,000 shards as long as they're not licensed characters. So, for example, you can't buy this one. You can't buy that one. You can't buy this one. You can't buy that. Or you can't, well, you can't unlock it with shards. You can't buy this one with shards. You can't buy these two any of these three right here with shards they, they cost money quentin costs money i think someone else costs money but i forget anyway you got my drift though most of them cost money okay you have to unlock both the killer and survivor for the perks if you want every single perk in the game so essentially you're either gonna throw time into it and money or you just throw money into it and not time if the grind becomes way too much and it already is if the grind becomes way too much it will discourage new players from playing the game from sticking around. It's just, it will discourage new players from sticking around because the grind is too much. They don't want to invest their time into that. The only people that won't affect really is the casuals because they don't play that much. That's what I'm trying to say. They don't, they don't play that much anyway. So who cares, right? They just come in for like a couple games and whatever else. Anyway, I'm going off track here now. Okay. So with, with all those points I just made, that's why I believe borrowed time is not good as a base, as a base perk. No perks are good as base perks period you should not get just a, a a base perk at all no matter who well, no matter what side you're on you come in with a loadout and it is what it is the only way they can make it easier which the devs said that they won't is to get remove the tiers now i don't know why they can't remove the tiers because all they got to do is delete the green and the yellow perks and that's it and then just get rid of the ticks and then just get rid of the ticks right here and then boom done easy i don't understand why that's so hard like you're just deleting two perks and then removing ticks. That's that's it. You can get like two, three people on that and it'd be done. No problem. But they want that grind. They want that grind. They're relying on you to keep grinding and investing your time. Because they want you to invest your time into the game so you can invest money into the game and then just keep doing re re rinse and repeat basically. If you buff the new player, it will buff the swift and the more advanced players and they will the swift and the more advanced people the people that actually play the game will abuse whatever you give them they will abuse it and it will ruin the more advanced gameplay it will ruin the com game completely because because you're gonna get less killers that want to play the game you know like get less killers that want to deal with this kind of crap they already don't want to deal with mmr and now you're throwing this at them right 
They don't want to deal with that. They don't want to deal with it. They don't even want it. Most killers, once you get past a certain stage, most killers don't even want to camp to get a kill. I don't want to camp this killer to get a kill, but I have to sometimes. I don't want a tunnel to get someone out of the game early, but I have to sometimes because I would rather finish the game with at least one kill than none. And you have to tunnel yet to tunnel correctly at a higher MMR. You have to do it correctly. You can't just go after that one person the entire time. You have to do it correctly. You have to target somebody and say, hey, this person's a weaker person. I'm going to keep them in the back of my mind as I try and play this game out that this person could probably die easily, no questions asked. You have to do certain things. You have to play scummy at higher MMR. And it is what it is. And I, I don't like it personally. That's why I gave up on this game. I absolutely hate it. That's my two cents. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, no disrespect to anybody. Just throwing in my two cents. Uh, I have a video where I play all killers and no perks, no add-ons, 30 seconds AFK if you want to watch that. But for the most part, I don't really play this game anymore. I'm mostly focused on uh, survival games now. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one if I react to a video like this. If I do, I don't normally do. But if I do, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care and bye-bye.